So, hello. Today, I would like to inspire you with the growth of with lifelong learning. And what I see here is really very tired faces, very tired people, full of good stuff they ate, full of good drinks they had. So I would like to ask you to stand up, please. Hmm? And I would like to make some um, work with you, some workout. And first of all, I would like to ask you to stretch your hands and uh, go to the tiptoes and we now try, everybody go higher, higher, we try to put down these lamps, please, higher, higher. And now, oh, we breathe and oh. Okay, you are awake? No, not at all. Okay, we, we repeat it. Again, we stretch our hands. We go for this lamp. Who can touch the lamp? This is the winner. He will get some chocolate from me. Okay, it's only me who is doing that. Okay, and breathe out. And I think we have to stretch also our legs. And the other one. Shake our hands. Shake the other hand. Shake both hands. Fine? No, not at all. Okay, I have to check what else we can do. Ah, yes, for sure, we can jump. Then we really get awake. So, without glasses, it's better. So, we jump a bit on the place, jump just a bit, a bit more and higher. And who can reach now the lamp? Who can do it? You get some chocolate from me. And slowly, slowly, and take another breathe. And another breathe in, stop, and breathe out. Another breathe in, and one out. And the last one in, we stop, and out. So how do you feel? Better now? Yep. Bit more awake? Great. I feel as nervous as before. You can sit down. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Oh, okay. And it immediately swept to my first um, topic I would like to share with you. When I was invited by JP, I really was uh, honored, to be very honest. And I'm very happy to have me here. And I thought, okay, I would like to tell you something about lifelong learning. And my first question which came in me is, how should this fit into the Lean Agile uh, conference here in London. Is this really about lifelong learning? Such a, I, let me call it a soft topic. Hmm. And then I looked, what is the purpose of the Lean Agile? And what I found is, it is a conference, first of all, for everyone. And it is also a conference for the soul. I like to add, it's for sure also a conference for the brain. Then we have psychological safety, I'm sure. Everything we are sharing between us, between huge groups, it stays really in the room. It is in Vegas. And last but not least, I also have written, uh, read that it is about experience exchange. I changed it a bit and sharing is caring. And this let me or gave me the security that I, give, I, I share with you today the right topic. And the topic is lifelong learning from my point of view, from my perspective, from that what I experienced. And I would like to invite you to come with me to the journey. And as we discussed a lot of times, how does this start? For sure, with what? With a why. Why should I make a lifelong learning? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, I would like to share this before with you from uh, Steve Jobs. And this is because I also will then tell you about my dots, my anchors. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You only connect them by looking backwards. And therefore, you also do not have this 100% um, security. You also have a kind of a uncertainty. Nevertheless, you have a good feeling, you have good experience, you have people, relation, um, friends, colleagues, you can talk to and uh, check with them, is this really the right way? Should I continue or should I go better to the left way? And this is what I really liked because I also can agree with the last sentence. This approach, according to connecting the dots, has never let me down and it has made me all difference in my life. And this is I really can share with him according to my experience. I'm not Steve Jobs, I'm Carmen. 
And lifelong learning, as I said, why? Why should we start with lifelong learning? For sure, first of all, the purpose. And this is something which is so um, needed and so useful. And if you would have asked me, I would say half a year before, come do you have a purpose? I would have told you, for sure I have a purpose. Okay, can you tell me what is your purpose? Um, uh, not really clear and aware of what is my purpose. And that led me uh, to the point that I thought, okay, I have to write it down. Very easy, very simple, but never did it before. I wrote it down and to be honest, I check it time by time. And this is for me the first most important point we have to answer. And according to the purpose, I would also um, uh, give a, a short feedback, a retro to yesterday, what we learned from um, Satpal. He gave us a good insight into the purpose, into the power of the purpose. So who am I? Where do I go? Why do I do this? What can I change? And not always the others, the organization, my boss. I, what can I do? The second point why lifelong learning is really crucial, in my opinion, is according to the VUCA world. We have a lot of uncertainty, volatility, you all know that. And um, I experienced it by myself. So this uncertainty was really, it brought fears in me, inside of me. And I, I thought, okay, normally I make a lot of jokes. I like to make jokes and this stopped nearly completely. And I thought, what happened? Okay, it is this war, it is this virus, it is a lot of things around me, but I have to handle it. And if I do not handle it, and if I do not like to change it or change it, I, I, I will die. And um, that led me to the point, not only that, but that's also one of the points that led me to lifelong learning, to understand better what is going around, what can I do, again, what is up to me, what can't I do, what do I have to um, accept, what, can, don't, um, what I'm not able to change. The next one is mastery. And this is not really only the word, it's, it is really about, I would like to become more and more a master, not somebody who knows everything and who is over all the others. No, for myself, for me, for my um, uncertainty, working against my uncertainty. Then there is another one, and this is really pretty easy, it's the curiosity. I think this is something we all should have. Nevertheless, we are five months or 90 years old. Doesn't matter. I think with curiosity, we can do so many things. And this is also something which leads us not only, but also to lifelong learning. And last but not least, we have the uh, behavior change. We have to change ourselves. Again, what can I change? Maybe I have also to change my um, point of view, my perspective. This is all the wise I asked myself and I tried to give an answer. I will not tell you all the answers uh, according also to the time, but nevertheless, this is what, me, what led me to this lifelong learning. And for sure, I would like now to share with you what did I do. And you see, it is um, a curve and it um, starts somewhere and it, it's, it's not at the end, not at all. And what I like to share with you, I started um, to become um, physics and a diploma uh, economia physics. Then I continued with to become a professional project management um, yeah, manager. Then I continued to become a professional scrum master. Then I continued with big data and uh, ethics and with Python. Why did I do that? This was, I would say, the first point when it was clear for me. That's according to my curiosity and to the uncertainty. I do not know when it was, but I heard about this big data and a big brother watching you and it is really uh, very dangerous and nobody knows what happens. And I also was in the same way to act and react. And I thought, no, you just are bubbling something. Somebody tells you, you do not know anything about that. And that led me to the point, okay, I have to do something. And I did it. And to, you know what? It really woke up my curiosity and, and I really, continued with it. Nevertheless, it's not a topic for my work. I do not really need it for my work, but I need it for me. It is my lifelong learning journey. And when I uh, regarded this, I really also recognized, okay, more or less, these are all hard fact um, topics I learned. 
But what about the, the soft facts? It's also very important. And so I started to learn the science of well-being. I did it with the uh, E-University Coursera. And there I really learned what does this mean, this well-being. And yesterday we had a deep dive from Amaya. I just wrote the name down. That's the reason why I need my card. And it was really great because for me, it was a bit of repetition of that what I learned, but it was also, yes, you did the right thing. And this is really great. I continued and I continued with machine learning. And here we can go the dot backwards, like Steve Jobs said, because I started with big data, with Python, with ethics. And uh, then I thought, okay, I had a, heard a lot of machine learning and this artificial intelligence. I do not have any clue what that means. And I started to learn. Nevertheless, I am not an expert in big data, in machine learning, but I know what is behind. And to be honest, I'm so curious. I will, I already continued and I will continue again and repeat and repeat it again. Then I, you see, <laughs> it was really my favorite. Nevertheless, it's not uh, according to my job. I just did it really for me. I, um, had a lecture on computational social science. It's very, very interesting. I just can recommend it to you and it opens so uh, a, a broad point of view for you. What is going out there in this um, big data, in this uh, machine learning uh, world? And it is really, in my opinion, also crucial. I would say latest in the next five years, we all should be really aware of it. Not only hearing something and following, knowing by ourselves. Then I uh, thought, okay, but in the very first beginning, I learned this uh, Scrum Master. And this is also a topic I'm interested in. I would not like to, to leave it or to forget about it. So I um, participated a lecture on SEMCO and I'm now a SEMCO style expert. And this is there, you can connect lean, you can connect agile, you can connect the flight levels and you can connect all or most of the social facts I already learned. So this is really also a journey, a point I did not know in, be in the beginning. It's always looking then backwards, wow, okay, it fits. You do the right things. Then I also thought I have to continue with this flight level. This is what we are doing in, our, um, in the company I'm at the moment working for. And I thought, okay, especially this change leadership, it is so uh, crucial and so important because I'm also a leader and I have to learn how to handle people in this VUCA world, in the world where we uh, work more or less uh, only in remote style. And then again, coming back to that, I also have to protect myself. I cannot give everything or every time somebody uh, what they need. I also have to protect myself to fill in also my cup that I can hand over some water into your cup. And this led me to the emotional intelligence. And now it's not the last dot, but it's the, I would say the actual dot. It is, I will start with my new company as a co-founder and it is called B2M, Bold to Move. And this will begin in July, 2022. So in just one month. And what I also already started is, I would like to give a support to the refugees. And I already uh, have a contact to um, the, the organization, organiza organizer of the refugees in my hometown. And I will have a meeting with him on 2nd of June. And I already know, let's say a bit, what am I doing? And this is what really is something, it is also for me, it is a part of my lifelong learning. How do I, what can I do? What can I give hand over to refugees? And on the other hand, what can I learn from them? I, I'm pretty sure I will learn a lot of them. And it's not the end. What is the next? I have some ideas. I do not share it here with you and now, but I have some ideas. It's not at all the end of my journey. And I ask myself if I would see this, I would ask, uh, okay, and how did you do that? And I just like to share some of the hows I did do it. There are, I'm sure about many more hows. And one of the how is really just learning, go into a training. And this is pretty easy, at least I think it's pretty easy. Most of the trainings are now remote. Some are face-to-face. -face. I also like face-to-face, -face, um, no matter at all. But I think this, um, Having it remote makes it pretty easier. I do not have to, to travel here or there. I just can, can uh, start and then I close my laptop and I'm at home. 
Then I do it with, um, I call it collegial advice, but it can also advise, and this is what I also would like to hand over to you, inspire you, ask also your family members, ask your friends. They know you in another way than uh, colleagues know you. And often they have a broader uh, point of view according what is what, what fits for you, what is good for you. And this is really very uh, useful to step out of this collegial advice also to family advice. Then it's like in the sports. It is something I would say, just do it. Learning by doing. Be couraged. This is uh, something I just can hand over to you. You can uh, believe in me, I was not really couraged to start with this big data because I thought, oh, maybe I do not understand it, I do not get it, because I think the level where I say, okay, it's fine, it's pretty high for me. And I thought, okay, but you have to understand it and you should repeat it again, uh, also valid for this um, language Python. Ah, you start now, but you should uh, really be able to use it. Just do it, try it, give it a chance, be couraged and you will see you will success. And also accept small successes. This makes you so happy and you are really then, you have so many intrinsic motivation to continue. And last but not least, what I also uh, would like to recommend is this uh, e, e University. I made it with uh, Coursera and really I can tell you I only have very, very good experience with that. And, and here I have the, the chance or uh, I would say the best thing is I can do it whenever I like to do it. Uh, to be honest, I'm not always willing to learn something. Sometimes I'm really lazy, but I'm proud meanwhile that I can be lazy and that I accept, yeah, Carmen, you can be lazy, great, just do it, read a book or do nothing. And on the other hand, then maybe in the night, I cannot sleep and I think, oh, what to do? No, I won't, won't be lazy. Oh, I'm now really interested in this or that stuff. And according, if it is um, offered by Coursera or by another e-university, I just can do it. What I would like to tell you at this moment is, I am not at, not at all somebody who always do something. I also, I really can be lazy. I can sit down, I can drink something. I enjoy to eat with friends, with colleagues. So this is also something you have to be really clear for yourself. What are you doing? What are you allowing? When would you like to, to make a break? And then please make a break, break. I had to learn this. And when you are curious, when you would like to learn something, then do this. And I come nearly to the end, lifelong learning. It is the conclusion I would like to make with you. It is like a continuous process improvement. It continues. It is uh, really a never ending story. And I'm pretty sure I will end, finish my lifelong learning when I will die. I'm pretty sure about that because there are so many topics I'm interested in. Only um, also I would like to pick out two or three of them. I'm really interested in uh, Roman history. Oh, in the school it was so boring. And now I started, it's so interesting. According to this, I also started to learn Italian. Oh, I am not an Italian speaker. I can just uh, order a pizza and a uh, nice wine and maybe a bit more, but not uh, so much more. And according to these languages, I thought I never learned Latin. Okay, Carmen, we will do that. I already bought books and I will do it. Maybe next year I can tell you I know a bit, a bit more about Latin. So this is really a continuous process improvement. And you see, it is not only going in this or in that direction, it is completely diverse. And I think this is really also very important that you allow it. Then what you are doing for yourself is you add value, value in your own life, but also to be honest, and you will get this feedback also to the environment. A lot of people tell you, you changed. Your behavior is really changing. You remember why? Changing of the behavior. Why? What is about my uh, behavior? You're more open-minded. You're more interested in this or that. You, you are a better listener, whatever. And this is really something you will, um, you will um, see and also the others will um, see. And last but not least, there are some success factors. And the first I like to uh, share with you is the readiness, willingness and ability. And yesterday, I think it was during the talk of Pavel, we heard about I will, I can, I must. And this is really what I connect with these uh, three success factors. Another success factor is really shift the perspective. 
Again, I told you about this uh, big data stuff, and I really thought from only being here and saying, oh, it's the big brother and it is really very dangerous and everybody knows everything about me. I really moved on to the other side and I say, no, first of all, it's up to me. What do I allow the big brother watching me? Which data do I share with him or her? And this is really change, shift the perspective. And last but not least, what is also important and makes it uh, more interesting is really transfer it, apply it. If I come back to the language, to um, Italian language, this year I will make holiday in, it, in Italy and you can be sure I will try it out and I will uh, talk with the people in Italian language. And I know two things, it will work and the other, I will get more inspired, more motivated to continue. This is what I mean with transfer, apply it, just do it. And last but not least, I would like to ask you as the community here, as this changer, this game changers, be not only a knower, it is important, but be also, be or become a learner. Continue with uh, lifelong learning. I promise you, it will make a lot of fun and it will really uh, also be something for your heart. Thank you very much. I'm at the end. And open for questions. How many time is left? Uh, you have about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Oh, great. Oops. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll just leave it was no, behind. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, this is always you looking there. Yeah. Hello. Um, how do you manage your time? Um, uh, because these extra activities that you're taking on, um, do you? they obviously represent a chunk out of the capacity that you've got throughout your your week. So do you time box it? Do you think to yourself, I'm going to um, allow myself an afternoon every week or if th this course that I want to do is 19 hours worth of learning? I'm gonna, um, how do you stop yourself becoming overwhelmed by um, taking on mm -hmm. too much, mm -hmm. doing Correct. too much. Correct. This is you have to take care of. And to be honest, in the very first beginning, I was so curious, learned so many things in parallel, and this that did not work. And at the end, I thought, uh, okay, sorry for that. What a shit. Why did I start this? Am I stupid? And now I do it really only if I'm interested in, then I start, then I continue. And especially according to the e-universities, for example, you can do it three weeks later, or you can do it all by one. I would not do that because you have to re uh, time for reflection. But I really do, uh, do it only when I'm interested in. At the moment, to be honest, I do not have any open uh, course at the uh, e-university because at the moment I'm satisfied. I do not need it. Well, I'm a bit more interested in this Roman history. And if, if this is closed for me, I cannot tell you when it's closed. Then it's closed for me, maybe not for others. Then maybe I change to something else. But I really take care, meanwhile, that I have breaks, that I have also the time really for friends, for this uh, social connecting, for the networking. This is also crucial, in my opinion. Okay, if nothing else, thank you very much and yeah, enjoy the rest of the day.